Robot Wars, the pioneer of mechanized mayhem on television. For 20 years, we have watched these machines grow, evolve, and bash the living daylights out of each other in the process. Making its triumphant return after a 12-year absence, this show continues to enthrall a new generation and bring us the sport at its most refined. Join us for our own celebration as we take a look back at our journey from being super fans to appearing on the show and learn the ropes of being a roboteer. Along the way, we will be joined by other stars of the show from past and present to offer their advice. I was absolutely thrilled to find out the Fantastic, this is it. This is the childhood dream back again. People don't really get this sense of scale that is the production of Robot Wars. Why not build something radio controlled and smash things up with it? You know, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's just what I want to do. Can't describe why I wanted to be involved. I just knew that I had to be involved. So come with us as we commemorate 20 years of the UK's one and only robotic fighting show and celebrate the reactivation of Robot Wars. San Francisco, 1994. After one man has the initial idea of building a radio-controlled vacuum cleaner, the sport of robotic fighting was brought to life. Model maker Mark Thorpe, who worked on some of the most astonishing miniatures and effects in motion picture history, including Indiana Jones, Batteries Not Included, Star Wars, and Ghostbusters, set up the first ever Robot Wars competition in the Fort Mason Center. From this came the creation of a show that would define my childhood. It would be the foundation of a technological and televisual revolution. Mark Thorpe, the godfather and creator of Robot Wars. Oh. I had this idea for a video control vacuum cleaner. The, the idea was to make vacuuming fun. In any case, I bought myself a tank mount of battery power back like a dust buster on the tank. And so when I when I gave up trying to hustle that, that idea, I thought, what do I do with this tank now? So I thought about putting power tools on it, battery power, power tools. The best way to, to approach that idea was to stage an event and invite other people to participate and I got like 17 entries. Well, it was huge and I, I, I had really no experience doing that at the time. Steve Carsey came over to see a big robot Wars. I think the next year for the format, keying off my first event which had a house robot. I had a house robot built because I wanted to have something that I thought would be definitely exciting. It was big, it was way bigger than any of the other competitors. He brought this format, we put on a kind of a makeshift show there for, for the guy who was head of, of BBC at the time. They just took it from there, made it into a TV show. Hi, I'm Craig, and this is Ante, competing in the Outweight competition. He's got a little lifter, he's going to throw everyone out of the arena. So I first heard about the show uh, when I was about 12 years old, and um, the early after-school engineering club that I was part of, uh, was sent the original information pack for the very, very first Robot Wars. We watched a video of these incredible RC cars destroying each other. I mean, that's, that's all they really were. Um, I think it was the, the 95 or the 96 uh, Robot Wars in San Francisco. I was hooked. I was instantly sold on the idea and that's all I ever wanted to do from there on in. It was like a, a light bulb went off and I was like, this is it. This is it. I saw their version of more of an entertainment property, or as I intended the, the event to be a sport. And now on BBC Two, Robot Wars. And so, on the 20th of February 1998, the sport of robotic fighting found its way onto mainstream television. I think that the, the first, first thing I remember seeing was an advert in the Radio Times saying the show was coming on. I watched the first run of the show, um, I thought, oh, this is brilliant, there's got to be a second series. Um, I'll have a word with my mates, say, say about building one, um, we'll have a laugh. You know? so, um, so we did, basically. <laughs> I sat down, I think The Simpsons was on before it, and there it was, it was Robot Wars. And I watched Roadblock go through the gauntlet, and I was like, it's real, <laughs> it's not just 
is not just a thing that they said at the information pack. It's a real thing. I, I turned an old shelving unit into a robot and I put uh, two drill motors in for drive and that was probably within about 20 minutes of the show finishing. The very first episode of the very first show, we had the bits of a robot coming together. It just also had quite a nice kind of raw feel to it. Obviously the show nowadays is very slick and polished, but back then you could see it was obviously the first time they're doing everything. Uh, you know, things would work, things wouldn't work. And it just had a uniqueness about it, which um, it just makes it all the more special. We started off as fans, we bought the toys, uh, and it did take us long until then we started getting involved and we're like, yeah, this is something we definitely want to be involved in. Robot Wars scared the hell out of me the first time I saw it. Because it was on after The Simpsons and I sort of stumbled across it as a young boy. And I remember watching it and they introduced a kill a lot. I remember just being so freaked out. I was like, no, no, no. This isn't a show for me. This is a show for older boys. But I ended up watching it again a couple of series after that. I think it was uh, The Third Wars. I, I definitely remember watching Razor vs. Backstabber. And I just started finding it cool. I thought, oh wow, this is really interesting. It's a unique show. And plus the robots kind of looked like toys. And obviously I was a big toy fan as a kid. Some things never change. Uh <laughs> Ten horses more powerful than you. Yeah, well, John Wayne had ten horses too, didn't he? Yeah, and he was, you know. Muppet. <laughs> right, OK. You see it on TV, don't you? The um... Can you build a robot? Can you do this? Can you do that? I thought, well, actually, yeah, I can. I'll give that a go. So I did. I liked it because I'm, I'm the type of person I love building stuff. I love uh, building and getting it all perfect and then going, right, what's the next project I can do? I love the show because it's such a simple premise. You get a robot, you put it in an arena against another robot, and you just watch them fight, and then one of them wins and moves on, the other one loses. It's such a simple concept, and yet it works brilliantly. It really hit on a lot of things for me. I mean, I love the carnage of it all, obviously, but I also just love the showmanship. It was this great way of showing your creativity. You know, if you wanted to build anything as a robot, you could. No one at my school watched it. Uh, all the boys would go play football. I had no real interest in football or sports of any kind. So Robot Wars became this little kind of safety net for me. Like when I had nothing, I had Robot Wars. And obviously that moved on to building the little cardboard models and stuff. And I built so many of those as a kid. Like I built so many, I was able to have my own Robot Wars. And I just don't mean a couple of fights. I mean, I put together full series of Robot Wars. And everyone else was playing football or the latest trend that was going at the time. Uh, the thing I loved about was just in my own wee corner building the robot. To see Robot Wars go off the air, it just felt like such a crying shame. And for years I would always check TV guides and go, when's it coming back? When are they doing another series? I, I would check Channel 5 and BBC2 and go, come on, come on, when's the next series? And it just never happened. So that's what led to me putting together the Bring Back Robot Wars documentary in 2012. There was, there was no real sort of anniversary or anything like that to celebrate, it was literally just this is such a unique and fascinating and creative show. There's, it's, it, there's nothing like this on TV. And I know for a fact that the live events are still going strong to this day. The sport has never been more popular. This needs to be on television again. On YouTube, there was a person called Stephen McCullough, Wood Saxon 7, he done a video. And I love the fact that there's somebody else out there who was passionate as much as I was. Because where I live, there's not that many people like Robot Wars or know about it. Um, so I got brave enough to send him a message uh, to be come up to come on to a podcast uh, to talk about it. And me and Stephen got really, become really good friends. Actually being on Robot Wars was the childhood dream that I never thought was possible. Like me and my dad used to sit on Friday nights and watch the episodes together and he really got into it as well. And we always talked about, hey, maybe we should build a robot and go into this, but obviously he didn't have any electronic experience. I certainly didn't know the first thing about building a robot at the time. So it was just nice to sit there and dream that maybe one day it'll happen. And then obviously the show went off air, so I thought this is never gonna happen in a million years. I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> Little did we know, but behind the scenes, plans were in motion to revive the show for BBC Two. And on the 13th of January 2016, the announcement came that Robot Wars was back. I got absolutely fantastic news. I, I was 
I was absolutely thrilled to find out the rubber bullet was coming back to the point where I almost didn't believe it. Got a phone call through, this is not a joke, we're bringing back robot wars. Would you like to build a robot and enter? And I thought, I'd love to. We just kind of got the notification and the nod from the Robo Challenge guys and my brother and different people that this was going to be happening, that Robot Wars was going to be coming back. This is it, this is it. the childhood dream back again. Uh, and then to top it all off, I found out it was being filmed in Glasgow. I checked my phone and the first thing on BBC News was Robot Wars getting rebooted. And I, 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 I almost had an out of body experience. I couldn't believe Robot Wars was coming back. I was so excited. I was just so excited. I remember the applications came out that day and so there was an email address with a form that you had to fill in and I got the form and I filled it in um, <laughs> I spent uh, the afternoon at work on the computer doing paperwork and I was uh, just filling in the, uh, the stuff for uh, Foxic and I was like send I took pictures of it I was like yes we're gonna do this it's gonna be amazing the new series was a hit, with the first episode alone attracting over 2 million viewers. We loved its new style, presenters and competitors, but we hadn't even the slightest idea of what was about to happen next. So one of the competitors in Series 8 was Foxic and I really fell in love with it and one of my only mini version of it. Um, and Craig Danby had put up a video of a miniature robot and that was my first time I ever was introduced into Antmates because mm. I didn't really know much about them. And I remember messaging him and I remember turning around saying, yeah, you can get, uh, Alex can make custom Antmates, which was a very awkward moment because I didn't realise who Alex was from Team Nuts at the time. Uh, and when I received it, I finally got Rusty for the first time. I, I absolutely fell in love with it. And around about this time, I was in the middle of talking to Shane. And I sent a video of it to Shane first, which was nice to get his input from it, but I knew for a fact it wasn't really good at reviewing stuff. And around about this time, you were looking to start reviewing different things. And Absolutely, I was like, yeah, anything and everything yeah. Robot Wars I wanted the to make a video The thing that on. I really liked it was like, I love to give the robot for you to review because you can do in-depth reviews but it was also for that little feeling of like oh I can sit back now and watch my robot being reviewed um, so when Rusty got reviewed the next thing was Shane had message saying is it possible to get in contact with uh, Stephen to do a review on my robot which I almost died I couldn't believe it like I, I, couldn't believe it. I was like so hang on you, you want me to review a heavyweight robot yeah how would I even fit that on my stage? <laughs> <laughs> what Shane had done was he'd messaged me and went, look, the only the only proper way I can see you reviewing Push to Exit is if you come along to the Series 9 filming as members of Team Aztec. Being part of the media relations, I think he yeah. called us. So uh, off we went to, to Glasgow, to Robot Wars, which was just such a whirlwind. I, I still couldn't process it to her on the plane. And I was like, We've literally just been talking to Shane online and now we're on a plane yeah. heading to Glasgow. Is this real? Is this actually happening? Welcome to Scotland. <laughs> I was expecting when we first got there for the warehouse to have like a big banner saying Robot Wars. Yeah. And it didn't. And I was like, oh, and it was, <laughs> it was like foggy, really, really foggy. So you're going, oh God. <laughs> But yeah. like, are we sure this was yeah, Shane Swan? The scary one was a taxi <laughs> driving off and just disappeared yeah, and into like, the fog. Oh, we're on our own. We're just waiting for Pyramid Head to show, head to show up at this point. Yeah, yes, you know, yes. Like so it, it was like, proper silent. It hill. was, it was. But then there he, there he appears. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Hello, last we meet. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going, Anthony? How Mr. you Paul, doing? I presume. <laughs> Mr. McCullough. How Mr. You uh, how was it, Anthony? Yes. Elizabeth, how the devil are you? Great. Welcome. Did you have a good journey? No. <laughs> that's fantastic. It was all right. It was all, all right. right. <laughs> it's great to see you guys. It's good to see you live. I know. I know. Here look, we look, are. Look, look. Yeah, you're here. I know. Look you're from I've, television. Look what I've got for you. <laughs> Way. Look what I have. So, um, I, which, which, which colour? Which, which colour would you like? I'll go for the neon orange. Neon orange. Yeah. I'll there go you go. There we are. You have to stick these on. That one, yeah. Anthony. Do you, want me to put that, do you want me to film putting it on you? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Are you looking forward to it? I am buzzing for this one. Yeah, yeah, of course you are. Now that we had met our team captain in the flesh, it was time to finally enter Robot Wars for real. 
Shane took us through a side door of the warehouse, and suddenly, there it was. The official Robot Wars pits. The feeling was just indescribable. It's such a buzz and such an operation. You're walking in, there's massive amount of crew, staff, runners, huge lighting rigs, cameras going around. It's such a massive production that people don't really get this sense of scale that is the production of Robot Wars. It's a huge operation that costs millions of pounds and there's just so many people involved in it. You literally see a fraction on the TV of all the people that are involved in that production. It's a huge operation. It's incredible to fulfill part of it. I just remember being absolutely blown away. Just the size of the warehouse was immense. Uh, and I just remember walking in thinking, this is it. This is a childhood dream that I've wanted to achieve and here I am standing in the, in the Robot Wars pits. Uh, I mean obviously it wasn't quite the same as the old show, it's hard to know without having been involved with the old show what the pits were like there, but just this was this was my generation of you know competing. Uh, yeah, it was just phenomenal. No other words to describe it. I was 13, 14 years old when I first actually got into the the pits, you end up with this really bad imposter syndrome where the people around you, you've seen them on TV, and you're like, oh my god, that's so and so, oh, that's Rob Knight and Arthur Chilcock, and I was like, oh, that's Rex Garrard, and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And uh, you end up standing in the pits with somebody called Kim uh, and his box yellow robot, and you're like, oh wow, so, uh, so what does yours do? And you start talking about robots, and then he goes on and wins the show. Uh, but that was at the auditions, it wasn't yellow at that point, you hadn't painted it, but it, you know. Meeting people at the auditions and then seeing them years later as the superstars of the show. It's a weird, weird feeling. And it feels even stranger when you meet them years and years later. And they, their recollection of that event, those events, is very different. Because I'm like, oh, I was terrified. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. And they're like, yeah, yeah, me too. It's like, you won. You won Robot Wars. How can you not know what you were doing? The first thing I seen was the lasers. The, the yeah. green lasers just moving and... I was like, oh my god, I'm here. For me, it I, was it was you know the uh, the white lights at the pit benches. Yeah. Just because I walked in, I saw it, and it looked like I was watching an episode of Robot Wars, but from really far away. The first team we actually met was Alex and Rory. They were just getting ready to pack the robot they away. They were, yeah. And it was so nice to finally say like, Alex, thank you so much for making my dream country to own my own little robot. So after we like had our moments walking around the pits and, and seeing all these amazing machines, we got to go to our table and there's pushed eggs that just sitting there. And from what Shane was telling us, like we got knocked out of the, out of the uh, battle. The qualifier we battle, like, we were, we were expecting, hit by a spinner. Yeah, we, totally when we heard that, again. we were like, right, okay, it's going to be total, it's going to be just Yeah, bad I was bits. expecting like a massive gash through the side of yeah, it, you know. Yeah. And, it, and I was sitting there going, where's the damage? Like, yeah. And then he's like, this bit and this bit. It's like, in a bit for me personally, I was I was relieved because like, yeah. Oh my god! And then, to, the, for me, for I, I did this thing where I just put my hand. I was like, it, just for clarification, it's like it's real. Yeah. It's really real. And then the next minute, Shane's lifting the top panel and going, this is the motors. This is this. When building a robot, one thing that we've done with most of our robots, so our first heavyweight was Merlin and we've had lots of other ones since then. We do like to go for a flipper. They work and robots such as Apollo and Eruption and Rapid have proved that the original design works really well. A wedge flipper just works every time. Well, most of the time anyway. Shane had shown us the internal setup of Push to Exit, but another surprise was in store. He was like, right, do you want to drive it? I was like, yeah. What? Like, I was just happy to see it. And then when he's like, there's the controls, off you go. Yeah, because like, we were just standing there in the pits. I'd finished recording everything. And the next thing you know, he's putting it onto the trolley. 
he's testing the drive and testing the removable link, making sure the batteries are charged. And we're going, what, what, what's yeah. this all about? Next thing you know, he's pushing it over toward the test arena, mm -hmm. loads it up inside the bay, and hands us the controls and says, go. Learning to drive and control your robot can be quite a tricky thing. And I'm, I'm an alright driver, I don't think I'm a great driver. When I'm driving around in my shed or at home, I'm pretty good, you know, it's kind of calm and it's moving well and so on. But when you obviously go into the arena, and especially when there's TV cameras and in the Robot Wars arena, it becomes a lot harder to remain calm and nerve set and you get shaky hands and all sorts. Uh, it was really difficult to, to learn to control it. I mean, it's a, it's a basic, the first one was um, a basic tank stair where, you, where you've got two controls left and right, full forwards, full backwards, very simple. As the robots carried on and were built 13 black, the uh, speed of it increased about 20 miles an hour, it started to get a lot faster. And we couldn't really do it without a gyro. Um, which was great fun, you wire that in, they were new at the time for us and you wire it in, switch it on, you go up and kick the robot and it, it just stays there, it fights against you, it's brilliant you, know, you drive along, you go to straight line instead of round and round and round um, unless that's your intention of course The longer you've had a robot and a drive set up um, the better a driver you are We did shock them with our driving skills because you know a lot of people whenever they first get their hands on it they go Vroom! Yeah, and then he was expecting us to crash into the the far wall of the test arena and stuff. But we both controlled that really, really smoothly. Like you know, we did. Like so much so it shocked Shane and um, one of the the technical assistants for Robot Wars. Yeah, I remember him saying to you like, "Oh, you definitely have control, like on the button." And I think I think at that point you were like, "Well, I've played a lot of games in my I've, time. I've so. played a lot of computer <laughs> games. Yes." Yeah, hands are permanently stuck like this, <laughs> forever. I am absolutely awful at video games, um, but I think I take to driving robots fairly intuitively. The hard part I find is uh, keeping your like eyes open and having an overall view of the arena or what's going on. It's amazingly hard when you're actually in a fight. With our driving skills now put to the test, we were back to our exploration of the pits. The atmosphere was brilliant, the levels of support for each team could be seen as the lights at each table dimmed, and every roboteer dropped their tools and ran to a screen at the side of the warehouse to watch each fight as it happened. The atmosphere in the pits, apart from being cold because it was filmed in Glasgow in March, uh, it was just... It's just one big happy family, really. It's such a great atmosphere. There's so much going on. It's so busy. There's noise. It's just a great place to be. Everyone always says it, but it's absolutely true that the people in the pits, and the crew and the other roboteers create such a positive atmosphere. And it's so much fun to be around those people and to be able to bounce off those people and use their knowledge and expertise. So the original run at Robot Wars, um, the first group of guys that we had in the pits, everybody was kind of, they didn't really know what they were doing and it was a lot of fun, but nobody was taking it too seriously. And as the years went on and people kind of knew what they were doing, we ended up with a group of guys who really, really did know what they were doing and a group of guys that had no idea what they were doing. And I was, I was not anywhere between the two, I was definitely in the group of guys that had no idea what they were doing. I just remember, People like Mike Lambert and the um, the guys behind Grim Reaper, they were friends. And once you were friends with them, you were friends with everybody. And um, it wasn't so much of the... Um, it, was, it was competitive, but it was a friendly competition. The new series felt... the pits felt really like, oh my god, what have you built? And it was like all of the excitement of like, wow, we can do spinners again. We could do all of these crazy things that we couldn't do before. Um, it's like, wow, this is fantastic. And series nine... It was a bit more, there was a lot more competition between some of the more serious people. And Series 10 felt really competitive. There was a competitive group of people. And the social aspect of, of Robot Wars has begun to sort of slide away. Our time in the pits was almost at an end. But I couldn't leave without talking to James Cooper from Robo Challenge and finding out more about the new and updated house robots. So uh, we run the technical side of Robot Wars, we make sure all the robots are safe, ready for battle uh, and we build and run the house robots. It's not until you see these machines in the flesh that you realise just how powerful they are. I mean you're talking about 
The competitor's been 110 kilo bits of kit and you've got up to 250 mile an hour spinning discs on there. So it's absolutely vital that the machines a, conform to all the rules that they're loaded and activated in the proper way to make sure that people don't get their arms chopped off and things as a very set procedure. We had a look at the originals and when you see what they're up against now we knew that they'd just get torn apart against these new uh, breeder spinners and flippers so we, we wanted to create brand new ones but we, we didn't want to completely do them from scratch we wanted to kind of get the character, feel as though Killalot's gone away, continue battle in some way, come back and now he's like, he's bigger, he's battle hardened, you know, they've all really bulked up on weight, on power, uh, they're like double the weight of the original ones, they're far beyond the power and the armour, and we want, but we wanted them to feel as though they were the same robots, but they're just more battle hardened now. So we've got Sir Killalot, we've got Shunt, we've got Dead Metal and we've got Matilda back, no Sergeant Bash, no Refbot, no Mr. Psycho, no Growler. What, was that a conscious decision? Why did you decide not to bring the rest back? I, th I think it was really important to see what the fans really wanted. Like, I, I'm a big fan of the original Robot Wars. That's what inspired me to sort of get into engineering in the first place and how we started our company. Um, so it was really important to get those core robots back. We would have loved to have built uh, a Sergeant Bash at the same time, but with the timescales to get it ready for the TV show, it just wasn't possible. So, But may maybe we'll see him in the future, fingers crossed. And with that, our time in the pits was over. But that didn't stop us from joining the audience and witnessing the recording of the show from a fan's perspective. Audience members congregate in a marquee at the back of the warehouse where they can watch the fights on a monitor. Then they are led into the building past the back of the arena and to their elevated seats where they can witness the carnage of the day. The arena looks vibrant due to the great lighting design which extends to the inner walls of the warehouse, giving it this perfect hot industrial setting for robotic battles to take place. It's an amazing experience to sit so close to these fights, hear the machines clash in real life, see the reactions of the roboteers and audience, and even spot the judges watching over each fight with a sharp eye. We're, we're sitting in, in the, up, up in the audience and I'm looking across and I see a, a full body spinner and I'm like, oh that looks familiar, and I just see this orange robot and I'm like, wait a minute, that looks familiar, and I want to look up there's Craig Danby sitting in his fox hoodie, and I was like, I just turned, I'm like, I turned to both, he's going like, Foxic! And jumped up going, Foxic! If that had been, if the camera had turned around, I would have seen this mad guy just shouting, ah, he's Foxic! But I know him! I, I know him! <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. So after Series 9, we were really bitten by the bug. We yeah. wanted more robotic fighting. So Shane was talking to us about the live events. The live events are fantastic. They're the things that kept uh, the sport alive whenever Robot Wars went off the, the TV originally. So there was an event coming up, Burgess Hill. Yeah. And Shane said, I'm going to that, you guys come along, and the three of us will, will be Team Aztec at this event. So the night before was pretty fun, because oh, Anthony came to my house to uh, stay over, and then we would get a lift up to the airport. We decided to stay up all night you, and play Robot Wars you, Extreme Destruction on the Xbox. Yeah, you said to me, oh, I have an Xbox and there's a Robot Wars game. And I was like, there's a Robot Wars game? I was like, you, like you, you've, you've never, never played? Seen it? He's like, here's a controller. <laughs> By the time we realised, oh, he hears like a bird cheaping. And I was like, like, no, no, not a game. No, That's our we life. always do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Open so, the curtains, it's like, oh God. So yeah, got the, the plane over. And Shane picked us up in his van and we went to the Burgess Hill Live event, um, Robots Live. And walking in there, it's basically like a, a big gym, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was like that. It yeah. was like a big sort of sports hall that was set up. And like, I'm just seeing like the live arena. This is something that can be taken down. I know. This is something that, that can be transported. Yeah. And it's crazy that it's it's all built and it's there and, and they have their own house robot. And it's constant fights over and over and over again. Uh, there's no real tournament, there's no real setup. It's basically, bring your robot, we'll all have a bit of laugh. Like, if you're knocked out, it doesn't matter, you can come back in the next fight and, and, yeah, and carry weird. on, you know. The live events did a lot for the show coming back. Um, if it weren't for them, it wouldn't. I don't think it would ever have seen the light of day again. It brought in new, new faces, new drivers, people were really keen. They've been too young to be on the show. We'd also been working with Robots Live to keep the sport going along with other roboteers and other uh, touring shows and all that hard work was now getting paid off and it was back on TV. Live events, you know, you can have 
four, five, maybe six fights in one day. You get to tune in your robot a lot quicker. You build a new robot, you go to a live event, six battles later, you've 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 got out all the bugs. You know, all the bugs are gone, you're, you're ready to go again, but you build a new robot, you go on Robot Wars for the first time, and the, all the bugs are there. And even like the same machines that I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd say, we saw Bigger Brother. It's, it's a great it's a great environment to be in, uh, especially for newcomers as well. You know, it can be quite daunting bringing this creation that you've made to an event where there are folk way more experienced than you are. Uh, but everyone's welcoming, you know, hints and tips are flying around everywhere, so it's one of the most kind of enjoyable places to be. The biggest thing was upping our driving skills because yeah. we were given Monty, oh, I love Monty to have a bit of a play with yeah. and and we were told right that's it you're going in here this is you controlling a heavyweight in a robot in a robot fight so I've had no sleep I'm not wearing my glasses I'm about to have my first ever heavyweight combat robot fight thanks with all the encouragement that I can get <laughs> It was so hard to control a flat bot. Yeah. So hard because like they did this thing where they went around the arena and announced each robot and it would come out and do a little spin in the middle of the arena and go back into its starting position. It got to Monty! And I had the stick to go forward. And Monty does this really cool thing where it goes out into the arena and goes bang! 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 Not intentional in the slightest. No. <laughs> that was literally me going, how do I stop this thing? Yeah, you What's had the exact same like, experience. Like, that. what is happening? Oh, yeah. Three, two, one. What an absolute rush! Oh, like, it, like you, you feel like you're floating on cloud nine, I'm ten, still on cloud above. nine. <laughs> like, whenever they call cease, you're still going like, ah, like it's 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 cool. Like when it's I, so like, cool. Like they try to come out, going, try to do a spin, and the crowd laughed and that, and was like, yeah, I'm gonna die. <laughs> When I fell into the pit the first time, I, I stopped. I was like, right, well, that's me done. Yeah. And I remember uh, Behemoth turned around and me going, what are you doing? Can, can drive, drive. You can get, if you get out of the pit, you're, you're, you can still fight. Meanwhile, there's me recording it. At the top of my lungs screaming, <laughs> come on, get out of the pit, yeah. come on. Go on. God, yeah. did this just happen? That's just... It. That and the fact you won. I know, I can't... I, I didn't win. Like, Big never won the one I fought. You won out of everyone. I know, everyone. with the thwack bot. I, I still remember that when I heard it. Like, you know, like, you were talking to Shane, and they were talking about, uh, and the winner is Monty, and I was like, hi, oh, wait. But I, I, that, I did, did I, I did that, that one, didn't I? Yeah, it's yeah. that, that me. You you cut out your entire surroundings. You're focused on the robot. Yeah, and once once activated is called, yeah. like, uh, you zone out completely and you're, you're made for it. It's like when you play football, you never take your eye off the ball. No, whenever you. you're whenever you're in the, the sport itself and you're controlling the robot, you never take your eye off that robot. After Burgess Hill wrapped up, we then were contacted by Shane again. And just, he was talking to us back and forth and he said, right, okay, do you want to be on the team properly for Series 10? Like as in, the rest of the team take a break and it's the three of us. We're just going to be the three amigos. I would love to be on Robot Wars one day. That's been one of my childhood dreams right there. I would love to be part of the team in some merit. Um, whether that be on Robot Wars itself, whether that be on the live circuit, I think it'd be some, a fantastic experience and really a dream come true. This time around, instead of flying, we were going to do the road trip, which was basically show up at Belfast Harbour at stupid o'clock in the morning, yeah. get on a ferry and just go from there. It's a sign, but it's technically not. <laughs> oh dear. Off to Robot Wars again. <laughs> what are you crying for? We're gonna die. <laughs> no, we're gonna win. Positive. We're gonna die. The 
full journey would cover a total of 146 miles, two hours on the sea and two on land along the west coast of Scotland. But the thought of finally being on our favourite show is what kept us going. When we got to Glasgow, the first thing we had to do was go straight to Renfrew, go straight to the Robot Wars Arena. Chains there. And he's got pushed exit out of the back of the van. We've helped him lift it across and put it up in the workbench. He's got all his tools and everything set up. Then the next thing you know, you have to go in and you have to uh, record pushed exit on the turntable. Yeah. In the corner of my eye, I just see pushed exit tilting. Yeah. And the guy's getting the shot, but he's focusing on the camera. And I was like, I just went like super slow motion. It was like, no! The table tipped. I pushed the exit went this way and we just saved it and that moment my heart was like just oh my god this could have been so bad so that's a robot wars first we broke the turntable we have a record we have a I record i don't think anyone can actually break that record <laughs> and then of course like we had to record the bit you know like our introduction bit where we came through the fog oh and god like the amount of, of variant that things that are for that one what was in the final episode was like so milliseconds much. why they didn't use this i never know <laughs> <laughs> so it's the two of us doing our badass walk along and boom. and then me in slow motion doing that <laughs> the big head roll and <laughs> bite you sort of thing right <laughs> and shane the second he clocks me doing this going <laughs> While well, I'm sitting and, going, what's going on? Yeah, you in slow motion going like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? But I mean, you know, the fact he's disappeared into the darkness. Yeah. And you're laughing your head off. I'm in bewilderment and the cameramen are just dying of laughter. So this is day one and we've just wired this up to the controller. This is my little Saxon button here and uh, this allows me to control the weapons. So a nice big green button, you can't miss it. So anytime we put a robot on top of the flipper here, I fire this, this fires the weapon, robots get flipped over, robots get flipped out, the usual stuff happens. I've got my little Vogue Saxon logo on the side, just as a sneaky little Easter egg for all of you super fans out there. So we've just done our interview with Dara. That was frightening, but fun as well. Uh, and we've also done our walk into the arena. Again, very fun too. And now we're just basically waiting at the side of the arena to go in. Frightening times. Actually taking the robot to the arena is one of the most nerve wracking things ever. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be unexpected. Like, like, are we going to do good? Are we going to do bad? It was just like million and one things going through your head. Yeah, and like before you know it, there you are pushing push the exit into the arena. There's yeah, Magnetar, the there's Alice standing next to you. Hobgoblin. You look across the arena, there's Hobgoblin. Madness, and then walk around to the back where you're getting mic'd up and everything, and you walk into that control booth. The rush of adrenaline was crazy. Yeah, the thing that got me was, it's like, this is happening. You're trying to process all that, and then all you hear is the lights go out, and you hear the three, two, one, activate, and everything goes blank. So quick. Robotiers, stand by. What just happened? Was that a test? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was like that. Like, what? Two, one, activate. Whenever you watch uh, Push to Exit flip over Hobgoblin, like that feels like it takes a long time. Like I pressed the button, Hobgoblin went flying and went into the blind spot. We couldn't see it. No. So we thought, like, what happened there? And then obviously Magnusar came along and clipped us. And that's where the problems began. Yeah. <laughs> And then Sean had a wee cheeky wee go on. Sean had a wee knock at us, almost hit the Robotech. That was uh, scary. That, that was, was scary. That was pretty bad. Cease. Getting it back to the to the pits again and just assessing the level of damage. That was scary when we opened the panels. Like even Ellis couldn't believe the the levels of yeah. damage his machine could do. 
Yeah. Like I'm just even looking at it, like seeing the shorn pieces of metal and. <sighs> I'm actually, to be fair, I'm very proud that we got it back in again. Yeah, well, we worked yeah, so hard yeah, trying to fix really that machine, um, stripping it all down, taking it into the Weldon Bay where, like, Shane tried the old hammer technique. Yeah, yeah. He tried that <laughs> because it's, tri it's tried and trusted, like, where he's, he's going, like, no, I'll just beat it back into sh <laughs> Actually, no, we're going to we're gonna have to do some work on yeah, this. Yeah. Anthony! <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, there's you with the angle grinder. Like, how did that feel? It was surreal. Like, I still remember Shane saying, right, you're helping me fix this. And I was like, Really? Uh, and at the moment when I was, when I was cutting the metal, he's like, right, straight line, cut it that way. I was like, oh god. <laughs> I was like, if I messed this up, this could, like, it really is pressure because if you cut something wrong, that could be your weak spot. That could be a part that could mess you up in the battle. And then you're sitting there going, oh god, I was going to cut that. You know, you were, it was amazing. And then you get in the weld. Yeah, I got, like, I got trained how to weld by uh, the actual welder who's there, Robot Wars, also by Shane. Yeah. Nice one, Steve. Thanks a lot, mate. Amazing. Welding these new armor panels onto it and stuff, and, and seeing the result of it, and it, it it makes you more invested, I think. Yeah. Like when you're sitting there and the, the pressure that you're under, because you know you've got a set time limit to do this, mm -hmm. and if you mess this up, like not only have you let yourself down, you've let the entire team down because you can't continue. Yeah. It can be really challenging to make a repair in the pits when a camera's coming into your face. I think it was the the first series when we were having the problem trying to fix the wheel that uh, had been damaged by PP3D. And we were just constantly getting asked, how long is it going to take us? And the camera crew were coming up. The facilities are, are pretty good uh, for getting your machine repaired. Obviously, you do have limitations on what you can and can't repair, um, just depending on what it's taken to machine a particular part in the first instance. So there aren't lathes and milling machines there. Uh, but that's where the kind of ingenuity and the creativity of the engineers and the, all, all the competitors, regardless of where they come from, comes out. If you can't do it yourself, there's people around, everybody mucks in. Um, if you've got a problem, they'll try and get you going, even if they're going to try and smash you up in five minutes' time, uh, which is all the fun of it. When we were filming, we actually broke our big LEM motor. Yeah, the, the casing shifted completely as the magnets stuck together, so it was, would be impossible, I thought, to pull it open. But Will Thomas from Aftershock had built a tool which could easily separate lem motors. So I borrowed that off him, separated it, and fixed the motor for the second fight. Admittedly, it didn't work perfectly, but the principle of uh, sharing and the camaraderie in the pit still stands. The, the amount of help that you get is crazy too. Yeah. Because uh, for Shane to turn around to us at Series 10 and go, OK, well, we need some red spray paint, and we need a charger for this, and we need things for that. Go find them. I was yeah. like, what, really? What, what do we do? Go up to a team and say, do you have this and can I borrow it? Yeah. And like, the next thing I know, I'm borrowing red spray paint off Behemoth. I know. Madness. Like, Anthony Pritchard, someone who I've watched on TV with Behemoth since I was no age, handing me red spray paint. Like, it doesn't get better than that. I know. That's fantastic. We're crying robot tears, but they're robot tears of oh, joy. Oh, the pun. <laughs> It'll never leave. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, the only reason why I ever said that, I still don't know. <laughs> my brain thought, inside my mind, it looks so amazing. In my mind, everything is awesome until it happens, and it's just not. <laughs> it's just not. Three, two, one. I remember with the expulsion fight, do you know what I was so annoyed by? The fact that I couldn't use the flipper again. Oh god, yeah, we, we could see that. Like, oh, oh man. We could see like, that. I was going like, right, I'm really looking forward to this night. What are you doing? No! <laughs> but I love the fact that both of you are still arguing. I know. Oh, flipper's not working. Yes, it is. It, it is. is, it is. Dude, I'm pressing it. Nothing. Right at the end, the coup de grace was the fact that expulsion gets flipped over. Yeah. Like you I, can hear the laughter from the side. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Haven't done very well on Robot Wars, really, have I? I must try harder. <laughs> Getting it from the end of the arena putting it onto the trolley and just everyone filming us and stuff and I was like right come on we've, we've got to do something here 
So I just decided I'll take my shoe off and throw it at the rope. Didn't tell anybody at this point. We were just so like, you know, like bye and then boom. I was like, what was that? Why is there a shoe on the ground? And then seeing you going, damn it, I have to get my shoe, I'll just kick it. Yeah. <laughs> and hobble like, Damn around. you! <laughs> Yeah, what was lovely too, and something I never got on camera, was the fact that Craig Danby came over to us. Yes. I was like, oh, guys, I'm so sorry. Like, I've got it for you. Like, I full on hugged him and went, oh, Craig, hold me like you love me. (laughs) That would have been brilliant to see. Like, it's like, but no, they never kept it in. But it was still, it's a good thing. Oh, no, no, no. They didn't keep that in, but they kept the robot tears line in. Oh, no. Oh, that's going to Of course they did. Of course they kept that one. How do you think I feel? Hold me! Boom! <laughs> oh god, yeah. No, we knew, we knew after that that cease was called that that was us. We yeah. were going home like it. Like we just thought, you know what? We're just going to do something fun. And have fun with we're it. Ju- yeah. yeah, we're just going into it. Because that's what it should be about at the end of the day, isn't it? Like, I mean, yeah, you can go into it and go like, I really want to win this, I want to win this. Like, for me, winning is just a bonus. Yeah. It's the fact that you're just there and you get to experience it and, and you get to play around with it and just have a bit of fun and like for me it was always about subverting expectations so like, I didn't want to go onto the show and everyone think oh he's that guy that just desperately wants to win at everything you know like I wanted to be that guy that was there to entertain yeah that was just the main have thing. a laugh that was the main thing I am building Envy um, that'll be back maybe that'll bring me some more um, luck maybe we'll see Steve and Anthony didn't they were pissing useless nah they weren't useless they were pretty good actually they were good they kept me going, they kept me going. One tiny loose wire in our receiver had caused Push to Exit to cut out during the fight, and as a result we were eliminated from the competition. But as we prepared to leave the pits and head home, Shane had one final surprise in store. I went went back to get the rest of the parts to put into the, the van, and... There's me walking along with all these parts, you know, going, oh, it was great, I'm so happy I got this here, so amazing experience. Turn around and push the exits in Stephen's car. And I was like, <laughs> stop for a minute. By this time, he'd already had his moment going. Uh, so, he, so he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at the robot going, why is it in your car? And, he, and, and I was waiting for like a prank or something to go on. It's like, yeah, you know, it's in the car. We're taking it home. Ah, gotcha. gotcha yeah. But he's like, no, we're taking it home. And I was like, waiting. And then I was like, no, this is going on too long. So Anthony, yeah. did you ever thought you'd see the day that a robot would be outside your house? Never. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? I just put the clothes in there. <laughs> it's my new home. <laughs> Usually don't they home deliver things like that? Nah, yeah, not this one. The whole way to Glasgow, and I got myself a fun stool. <laughs> <laughs> it takes all the right? Shotgun's here. Oh, I'll just duct tape it off. Two puncture holes. If he had hit war, the, ta- the whole brain of the robot would have been dead. Either the robot tackle would have been hit? Yeah. Goodness got sake. back to your place. Tug it in here, and just set like when when you've got all the lights down, when you've got all all the robot stuff out of the way, and you're home, you're back in your own environment, mm. and this is so like foreign. It's just there, and, and the two of us sat and looked and went, "Look how far we've come." Yeah, like this is real. Like, like honestly, I I had to keep reminding myself that push to exit is is sitting here in the collection room. Yeah, it was just. It it's was, still surreal now. Like. There it is. Like that, that's a heavyweight robot that's sitting here as part of my Robot Wars collection. I, I, there's no words. There is no better feeling than going from a little boy growing up, idolizing this show, loving it, having it as, as part of you, part of your, part of who you are as a person. Like the, the thing that formed you, the thing that was there for you and nothing else was there for you. The thing you could escape to. Yeah. Going from watching that as a fan to actually being part of that, and 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 I hope we entertain people. Yeah. I hope there's a little eight-year-old boy or girl or whoever watching that show, watching our episode, laughing their heads off at us being idiots, yeah. and going, "I want to do that. Yeah. I want that to inspire them. I want them to look at robots and look at teams and go, yes, these people are my role models.'" 
this is what I want to do. I want to get into engineering. I want it to inspire me. I want it to like influence my life for the better. Give me direction. Give me purpose. Just the way it's done with us. Just the way it's done with us, exactly. Like obviously with yourself, Anthony, you're moving on and building your own heavyweight. Yes, with greed we use some uh, spare parts of push to exit and I'm hoping to get it all up and running. Uh, to be a Rambot for a while and then uh, have some future ideas and plans for to make it into an Axbot. So uh, slowly but surely we're getting there. The best thing about this community is ask and you shall receive. You, know, you ask for like, like how do you wire this up or what's this motor or what's the best way to weld it and all that. And you're free, you're, you do get that bit of fear, you're oh, no, they're not going to reply back. Yeah. Boom, boom. But then you just realise they're, they're just human beings, yeah. they're not celebrities, they're not special people that see themselves as something greater. Well, the majority of them anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then you get the likes of me, who's like, mortal I'm above you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, like they are, they're, they're genuine human beings. Yeah. They, this is a sport for them, this is a passion for them. Mm -hmm. And they, do, they, they want to encourage as many people to do this as possible. So if you're ever stuck, ask a roboteer, yeah. and the, and they'll give you those answers. We knew everything about the robots. We knew about the heavyweights. We knew about the different weight classes, but we didn't know actually how to build in that way because the internet wasn't actually that big at that point. That was basically where we started, I think. We're just sort of animating in my garage. We've got loads of scrap. We've got a welder. Um, got a few motors and that. And we says, well, why don't we use what we've got and sort of, you know, put it put, just put it together on the floor, tack it together, and see what comes up. So the first robots that I designed were kind of rip-offs of older robots like uh, Biohazard and La Machine. And, um, somewhere along the way we, we created our first design which was a robot called Toxin. Um, that was the first one that we actually built from scratch and wasn't made of shelving units and drill motors. When it comes to the, the approach to design and building, um, I think what Ian Lewis said uh, years ago still rings true is focus on a weapon and then obviously build your chassis around that to mobilise the weapon otherwise you'll just end up with a really heavily armoured box and then a quite weedy weapon that you can't really do much damage with. I, I want to have a variety of other robots so I've got a flipper at the moment and a spinner I'd like to work on a grabber and a lifter I want a bit of variety a bit of a jack of all trades and possibly a master of none of them. Anyone that wants to get into robot building really should start supporting Liverpool first. Support Liverpool, you'll go a long way. I haven't won a match yet, but you know. I want to see Robot Wars go on forever. I can't deal with it being taken off the air ever again. Mm -hmm. It's something that we need on TV right now because it's something that inspires the younger generation to be something more. You can be intelligent, you can be creative. Robot Wars is a show that, yes, it, it revels in destruction and, and the thrill of success, but on top of that, it also revels in creativity and talent. From the very first moment that I saw um, Robot Wars and Robot Combat, I was hooked. Um, and I didn't really have, I didn't really have direction in my life right up until the point where I saw the show. There's always going to be Robot Wars battles or Robot Combat battles happening somewhere around the country, regardless of if the show is on TV or if it's not. It's such a wonderful sport and it needs to be celebrated. The fact it was off air for 12 years is a crying shame. I am so glad it's back. Long may that continue. Hopefully we inspire new generations to build new types of robots, new fighting machines, and just get your hands dirty, get building something, get off your backside and just go crazy, get creative and build something incredible. Robot Combat is here to stay. I think that it's gained a lot of popularity, it's gained a lot of notice, and it's got such a core fan base of people who kept the show alive even when it wasn't on air, that I just can't see Robot Combat ever necessarily dying. I think it really is only going to get better from here. Fingers crossed for Series 4 in the UK, um, but we've got Battle Lost back now for Series 3. Um, and with China picking it up, that's fantastic news, it really, really is great news.
I think the feature for it is definitely is a live show. So that you know you have a highlight show in the evening and you have a couple of live fights and then the final itself is live on TV with like semi-finals or something. Well, it might, might be the audience will determine what the final form of the show is. You know, it's going to be whatever the audience likes is what they're going to get. And just as through an evolution of, 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 of sport, I think it will find its, 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 its stylistic home at a certain point. It's very, it's still very early. Sponsorship, live uh, events, uh, sort of televised live events, uh, highlight shows, it's, it's the way that the, the, the show should go. And it's the way that, it's the way of the future. With technology evolving every day, it'd be fascinating to see what could come in, especially considering we compare what you had back in 1998 all the way up to 2018. It's astonishing and to see what could happen in the next 20 years, 30 years. For me, it is really exciting and I really can't wait to see what the next... You want the next evolution thing, of Yeah, it yeah, it's, it's just, it's a very exciting time, so... I, I have to say that I've gotten a lot of letters and correspondence thanking me for, for people, for, for those that, that have chosen to go into engineering. That's really, really gratifying. I'm so glad I'm involved in this. It, it gave me, it gave me focus. It gave me something to yearn for. It gave me something to, to strive to be good at. And at the age that I was, it was absolutely, it was perfect. It hit me just at the right moment. But I, I, I can't describe why I wanted to be involved. I just knew that I had to be involved. Something which I'm very happy to have had an association with, and some influence on some of the people who otherwise might have gone a different direction. I'm very happy with the direction they took. All I can say is the last 20 years have been great. Well, let's keep it that way. <laughs>